This specific list is inspired by some frequency of emotions list that I've seen floating around online. The list represents the highest frequency feelings that we have on the top and then gradually showing feelings and emotions related to lower frequencies. So I've seen these types of graphs several times before and I always find it interesting. I always stop to look at it and even save it. But then it's forgotten about until the next time. Therefore, I wanted to create one for myself. That could be a constant reminder of the frequency of my feelings. But if you know me, I have to make one that's slightly more minimal, neutral, to match my aesthetics. If you're not aware of the state of your mind or feelings, it can be easy to get stuck in a state where you might not want to be in for a long time. And I think most of us have a tendency of explaining our feelings in quite simplistic ways. If someone asks us how we are, we might tell them good or not great or tired. So the way we express how we're feeling are quite limited and also ends up giving us less understanding of how we're actually doing. If we take some more time to understand how we are feeling and put more accurate words to that, I believe it's easier to find solutions or ways to elevate our state of mind if we're feeling down. But the first point is the recognition. And I personally felt like it would be helpful to create a visual reminder of that. I think having a visual reminder gives you a natural way to reflect on how you're feeling and might even make it easier for you to journal or talk about it. It can get easy to feel stuck in the same state of mind for a long period of time, but when you already have the awareness of how you're feeling, it's easier to envision or create action towards another state of mind. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you should never have any negative thoughts or, or punish yourself for feeling down in a way. Feelings are supposed to come in waves and clouds. You have to allow yourself to feel them, but also remind yourself that they don't necessarily need to be there permanently if they're not beneficial for you that you can let it pass and let the space be filled with others. I like to mix it up when I paint. Sometimes I listen to music, other times I listen to podcasts. This time I wanted to listen to my thoughts. I wanted to just be in the stillness and actually listen to what was going on in my head. I think most of us are used to always being connected to something and always distracting ourselves from something. And even music and learning can be a form of distraction. A way of neglecting your inner thoughts by filling the space with other things. And it was really nice to just spend some time with myself and only myself. Not somebody else's voice, not somebody else's music, not somebody else's video. When you also give yourself the space to be silent, you're also more receptive for creative ideas to come to you. Obviously, we can get ideas at any point, and also when we're listening to things, but you tend to be slightly less receptive to it. Your mind is elsewhere and concentrating on something else and your inner voice would have to shout for you to hear it. But when it's quiet, it gives you some direct access. The silent whisper even might be heard. But it's all about balance. It took a lot longer to paint this chart than I thought it would. 
like any other of my projects, mainly because I painted around all the letters and there are a lot of letters. So I also mix things up by listening to some informational videos and music as well. I've been feeling a bit stuck lately, not because I didn't have any creative ideas or goals, more because I had too many, too many detailed thoughts about what I wanted to create that made things a bit daunting and put pressure onto making it, just because I wanted to create it exactly how I envisioned it. I think I spent too much time in the planning part so that the creational part became something that seemed overwhelming. So when I got the idea of creating this chart, it made a lot of sense. Sometimes you just need a smaller project and something that seems easy and accessible to you to feel comfortable to step back into your passion. When things become too serious, it can be a bit daunting to start sometimes. It removes the fun and lightheartedness of the process. By giving yourself something to create without any expectations, something that you're creating for yourself could give you that space to loosen up and get back into things. And when you're already started, when you're already in the process, it's so much easier to continue. to make the chart accessible to everybody. Obviously, you could go and download a similar chart online, but I wanted to give this as a gift from me to you. On the link below, you can download the chart and do whatever you want. You can print it and hang it as a visual reference, like I do. And put it as a reminder somewhere in your home or download it to your computer or phone maybe even have it as a desktop background you can even print it and have it inside your calendar or journal the choice is completely yours but I feel like it's something more people would benefit from so feel free to download it for free if you'd like to. As I said earlier, it gives you a great prompt to understanding where you are and where you're headed. And maybe how you can change your perception of your current reality and changing the way you're looking at things. And maybe even understanding more of the motivations you have behind your actions. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be coming back with another one very soon. Until next time.